We were designed to hunger for the deep things of God, to thrive on faith and wonder, to seek out divine wisdom that defies human logic. We were designed to unlock the mysteries of God. This is Breathing Underwater. This is the kindness of the father is he speaks about our specific season and the things that are happening in our daily life and gives us strategies Mm -hmm. and places to focus. Hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Margot. You just heard a little snippet from today's show. I have a couple guests where I do a live interpretation, but I chose that little piece there to put at the forefront because I think This truth is just so paramount in the realm of interpretation and really in the interpretation of the dream that we have today. This truth that the Father God, when I say the Father, when we talk about the Father, we're talking about Father God, that he is so intentionally woven into our daily lives and our stories, and he so intimately knows the things that are on our mind and on our heart and the things that we care about, that sometimes it can be easy to miss those details that he wants to speak to in dreams it's easy to come to the dream thinking okay there's some big maybe future message here or directional thing or prophetic word he's going to give me or speaking into identity and all of those things are things that he does and they're all equally valuable and they can sometimes become a focus when God wants to speak to us about what is on our hearts that very moment, that very day. What's going on in our season at that, at that very time? And one of my favorite things he loves to speak about and to show us is giving us a big picture idea of, of where we are in the moment, how we orient to our time frame. Orientation is what I call it. So often I feel a little disoriented in where am I actually in my life? Where am I actually in this whole process we've been talking about? Am I in the middle? Am I at the beginning? Am I in a a new thing? When is this thing going to be finished? When is this fulfillment going to come? You've been saying this to me, but where exactly am I in this whole process in my life? It's easy to get disoriented. And one of the things he loves to do is orient us and give us a big picture dream about the details, a big picture dream, to speak to the details of where we're at. And when I say big picture, I mean like just a zoom out to be like, see, I know all of these very details and you are right here. (laughs) Which I believe is what we're going to see today in the interpretation of this dream, which is going to be so much fun. I have used a word today and I have in past podcasts as well that you're going to hear a lot in the interpretation today because It is a word used a lot by these young women that I'm interacting with, and it has a lot to do with the content of her dream. And that word is the word prophetic. Now, I don't want to just jump over this in case you don't know what that word means. And in case you're listening and you didn't grow up in Christianity or you didn't grow up in a denomination that actually talked about the prophetic or prophecy or what that means. So let me just give you a quick definition of this word so that you understand and that you're following as we go forward in this. Prophecy is a gift that is given by the Holy Spirit when we give our lives to Jesus. It's given to some people, not to everybody, but it is a gift of prophecy where we are able to see through the Spirit, see either something that's going to happen, so something prophetic that's coming, I'm seeing into the future, it's a prophecy that I'm seeing and I'm speaking right now to give someone to encourage them and to build them up and to edify them, to give them vision for what's coming. And God likes to speak through stuff like this because it shows that he knows us and that he knows who we are and where we're going and to give us motivation and vision to keep going and to give us courage so often. Another part of prophecy is forthtelling, which is not foretelling where you see something coming down the road, but where you actually are getting insight from the Holy Spirit about something that's true about a person in that moment. You're actually telling them something about their life 
in that moment or from their past that you couldn't have known any other way. And the Holy Spirit will reveal this to you as you share with them, if you have this prophetic gift, so that they are drawn closer to God and say, I, there's no way you could have known that unless God revealed that to you because he knows who we are and he knows where we've been. So that is the meaning of prophecy or the prophetic. When we talk about a prophetic gift, it's someone that is gifted to receive revelation from the Holy Spirit, either in forth telling, meaning telling them, telling us or someone something about their life that's already true that they know, or foretelling, meaning they're actually seeing something ahead of time and bringing that into the now. So now that you know what prophetic means and prophetic gift is, you will have a little bit more understanding as we discern and interpret this dream together. Okay, here we go. Hello. So I have with me today, Miss Martina and Miss Mish, Michelle, but we call you Mish, right? Yes. So good to have you guys. Will you just give a quick introduction? Your names, where you're from, I'm Michelle and I'm from Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Martina. I'm from Argentina. We met Margo a few, like maybe a month ago at a dream interpretation conference, actually. Um, we were waiting in line to get a dream interpreter and she was like, oh, are you guys waiting? I'll, I'll just interpret it for you. And we're like, sure. And so, yeah, we each had a dream, I think, or just Mish. And Margo was amazing. And she, yeah, she was great. Thank you, Margo. We love you. Oh my gosh. I love you too. These guys are so cute. Um, I'm going to describe them because there's no video. They're both obviously of like Latin American descent. And so they have beautiful skin and dark hair and really just stunning, both of them in their own way and have their own little personalities, but they're like two peas in a pod. They do everything <laughs> together, right? You're like sisters. And oh, yeah. I have them on here together because they come as a package and Mish today is the one that has the dream, but Martina is totally going to help with the interpretation because both of these ladies are really gifted interpreters as well. And that's what was so fun about the conference is I just thought, oh, there's nobody open in line. Like, why don't I just pray for you? And the interpretation came so easily. And then just every day they would come and check in with me and tell me how much they were learning. So, so much fun. I'm so glad to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. Oh, it is my pleasure. It will not be the last time. Yes. <laughs> so for the sake of time today, I'm going to have Mish just jump in and tell the dream. And then we're going to just follow the Holy Spirit and see what he wants to say about Perfect. the symbols. I'll ask you some questions after you give us all of the, all of the details. Sound good, Mish? Yes. Okay. So in this dream, I was at a kid's school and okay, this this school have two floors and, and I was walking in a hallway on the first floor and a girl called Ali came and told me, Mitch, what are you doing here? Your baby has to be born right now. And I thought, what? Am I pregnant? So I look at my stomach and I was like, no, there's no way. How, how it happened? So immediately I knew that the dad of the baby was Elijah, which is her husband in real life. <laughs> so I didn't understand understood what was going on, but I was trusting in her. I was like, okay, I need to get her prepared. And okay, she let me ask you me. a question real quick. Yes. So to clarify, you didn't know you were pregnant, but you ran into this girl named Allie. She tells you that you're pregnant and you believe her and you know that the baby is from her husband, Elijah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Keep going. <laughs> okay. So then she started helping me in the process of give birth. And I was like, okay, I don't understand what's happening, but I'm trusting in her. Like mm -hmm. that she's telling me that I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started thinking like, oh, I'm not ready to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, I'm I started feeling shame in the dream because I was like, oh my God, like they're gonna, she's gonna help me to have a baby. So I started feeling shame. And so I was like, okay, I need a razor and I need to prepare for having this baby. A razor? And, like a shaving razor? Yes, yeah, a shaving razor. Uh, so I ran and I saw like this um, vending machine and I 
was looking for a razor, but I ended up a buying um, a dental dental floss. A dental floss. Uh, so I bought it, and it cost me six point eighty four. Mm. So I took it, and I was like, "Oh my god, why did I bought this? If I need a like a shaving razor." So um, I put it in my pocket and I thought, okay, I'm going to return it after they have the baby. <laughs> uh, and so I went upstairs to a bathroom and I saw a razor. I took it and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and shave really quickly because I'm about to get a birth, give birth. So I ended up going to the bathroom and shaving all myself, like entirely. And then um, after that, I was like, okay, I need to change my clothes. So I put it like a, a like a white dress. Mm. Um, like a white hospital gown. Yes. Mm. And then uh, my, a, my other clothes um, fell in the toilet. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. In the bathroom. In the bathroom, yes. Okay, okay. So, so I took the clothes and I was like, okay, I'm, I started like running. When I get out of the bathroom, I saw Elijah and he looked at me and he was like, Mitch, what are you doing here? Like, you're supposed to give birth right now. Mm. Hey, give me your clothes. So I gave him my old clothes and he, um, he went with me to the other floor mm. where I was supposed to give birth. Mm -hmm. So I started um going to the second floor and when I started um walking there I started thinking like oh my god maybe they just want to stole my baby steal, steal my baby um and I was like oh my god uh should I trust them or not mm -hmm. but anyway I ended up uh going into this room um where I was supposed to get a birth give birth and I saw Ali there with a girl and a boy. And they received me. So I, um, um, you, and then Mish hopped onto the bed where she was going to yes. give birth. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was there. And one of the doctors or nurses started asking me like, okay, you need to push to have the baby. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm trying but it's really hard like I can't <laughs> so then uh when I look at my uh like at my belly I was pregnant mm -hmm. and I start feeling the baby moving in my like inside of me and I was like oh my god this feels so weird but this is real so um a, I was like hey I'm trying and I'm feeling this baby but it's really hard you know to just push yeah and Ali what Ali started asking me like, hey, Mitch, how are you doing? And I was like, I'm doing okay, but this is weird because I, I mean, I'm, I technically just got a pregnant and I'm having a baby right now. And I asked the doctors like, hey, um, how is the process going? And they said, you're about to have the baby. You have 11 centimeters of dilation. So uh, I was like, okay. And immediately when they said that, I had this vision of like, okay, um, a, me with a baby in my hands, mm. like a little, like a, a newborn baby. And I was like, oh my God, this is my baby. Like I felt it like as mine. And I was like, oh Lord, wow, this is so beautiful. And I start feeling like kind of like the first love that the moms talk about. And um, I woke up. Mm. Such a good dream, Mish. Such a good dream. So first question is, when did you have this dream? It was, was on uh, on the Dreamlight Conference the second day. After ah, okay. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yes. So the second day into the Dream Conference. Okay. Interesting. And if you were to name the dream, what would you name it? Uh, the journey of pregnancy. The journey of pregnancy. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, so there's some things that Mish left out that feel significant to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. 
Yes. What did she leave out? When she goes into the room where she was going to give birth and she gets into the hospital bed, she she's like, oh, I'm scared. She's telling the doctors and they tell her that everything will be fine. Yes. And that's when she sees the belly and she starts to feel the baby move. Hmm. And then Ali was right bef- uh, beside her. She was kind of um, the woman that helps her give birth. Um, mm-hmm. And she tells her, ready? Like, are you ready? And Mish looks at her and she opens oh. Mish's legs to like yes. start the labor. And wow. then Mish knows what she has to do. And that's when the doctors come and they start to like help the, help her. And they're like, push. And she's like, I don't have any strength. Like I, I can't push. Um, and so then she tells the doctors that she's going to pray. And she starts praying in tongues. And she says, Jesus, you paid for that. I, you, you paid for me to not feel pain, mm-hmm. but I'm afraid. So help me in the process. And then that's when another image of her appears where she asks how they're doing with the dilation. And they tell her, 11 centimeters and she's like what I haven't felt any pain how is that possible and mm. they tell her that she's about to have birth and that's when she pictures the baby in her chest and she's filled with happiness and hope <laughs> I, totally, I totally forget about it and it was like a, a she, month ago I mean it hasn't written down <laughs> I wrote it down but I wasn't reading so lesson number one write your dreams down and read them because we forget details Mish it's okay. I'm just teasing you. I also, I I had this dream at 5.54 a.m. And I kind of feel that that's significant mm. also. Yes. So, at 5.54 a.m. Yes. And didn't you tell me that Martina had given you yes. some interpretation for that? What was that? Well, when she said 5.54, I immediately thought Isaiah 55.4. Mm. And that says... Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Wow. Yeah, that totally ties that into what I was kind of already sense. sensing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay, so the journey of pregnancy. And what would you say the primary emotions were in the dream? Surprise. Were they positive? A surprise, okay. And you never felt any pain? No, I never felt any pain. And I was surprised and kind of like, you know, stress, but it, it didn't feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was always positive. I was like, oh my God, I need to do this and do yes. this. Yes. Okay. This is awesome. This is definitely a God dream. So I'm going to ask questions and you guys just tell me what you think. And Martina, both of you obviously feel free to help interpret here. Ali, Ali is someone that you know, she's a friend of yours. What? What or who might she represent to you if she wasn't literal? Okay, for me, she's like a really good um, wife mm. and person. She's super happy. For me, she represents also like joy. Mm. And she's also super like serving. Too. Yes. Like she's always helping people. Um, yeah. Would she feel to you almost like you said she was next to you, kind of a midwife, you know, she's actually there to like yes. help push and be mm-hmm. positive and be like, you got this. Um, And you're friends with her, correct? Yes. So does it, does it feel like she could actually just be someone that's close to you? Who's there to actually be a we're part of the not, birth? We're not really close. Is that why you started to feel a little bit of shame of like, she's about to help me yes. have a baby. I think so. Mm-hmm. She's going to see it all. Yes. That, <laughs> yeah. Literally, that was my, my thought. Yeah. Uh, and this was also like a few weeks after a trip that we made to Tijuana with, with her them. and Elijah. Got it. Okay. So she could also mm-hmm. represent a leader. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's leave that there for now. So pregnancy. Obviously, I've talked about this before in podcasts, but pregnancies are usually not literal. Thank God. Um, and they usually represent us bringing something new to birth or something new happening in our lives or God birthing something new through us. That could be a gifting. It could be a promise. It could be all kinds of things. And you already know that. So what would you say, what's your sense of this baby? What did the pregnancy represent to you? In the dream, I was really confused. I, I didn't know. So what do you think? 
I feel like it's very significant how the dad is Elijah. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. if we think about what he represents Mm -hmm. to you, what what I would think is like, oh, the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And he's also like someone that's very championing. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like even more the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the pregnancy kind of has to do with that of how like, Mm -hmm. And you're also someone who's very prophetic and you've had many words and dreams about that. And so I feel like maybe it's talking about you've been preparing kind of for this and now it's the time to actually like go for it. Like you're ready in in a sense. Totally. I love that. And I love that you brought Elijah in because that was really highlighted to me. And of course we know if we're going to hear the name Elijah, we think scripture, Elijah was a prophet right? Yeah. First and foremost. So I actually would love to look up what his name means, but I have to get my book. So please hold. Okay. Elijah means the Lord is my God. And the spiritual connotation is spiritual champion. You literally just said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. Yep. And the scripture that is associated with his name is Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Wow. That's so powerful. That's crazy. Because when I said that he was like someone that champions, I was like, why am I saying this? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that was divinely inspired for sure. The Lord is my God, is spiritual champion. So I feel like this actually just speaks to the fact that the father of your baby is, is the Lord. He's actually the one that that planted the seed and he's the one that's championing this gift. And I also believe that Elijah really is speaking to this prophetic gift and and maybe a new prophetic gift. The -hmm. fact that you had this dream during the dream interpretation conference, and I won't tell your story. I'll let you tell a little bit about this, but from what I understood, you had had a little bit of training already in dream interpretation. So you didn't have a ton of expectation Yes. I mean, we actually, Martina and I, we were really like, oh Lord, we really want to learn more about dream interpretation. So we're kind of like going to go to the conference to, you know, like in faith, because we are having a class of dream interpretation right now. So we're like, oh, that probably it's going to be kind of like the same content, but we're like, okay, if we go, it's kind of like, maybe the Lord is going to do something in our lives so we did it in faith and we actually started getting more dreams and more interpretations and it's been a beautiful journey because actually our housemates they didn't dream before and they start <laughs> having dreams and it's been like a I don't know it's so beautiful because it's not only us but also our housemates are being blessed by us going into this conference mm. so it's been like oh wow uh it's whole like it's really different yeah so we went to the conference and the content was actually really similar to the class but there was something spiritual that was kind of imparted to us yep. from the leaders at that conference yep. and from Margot too um and so that's when literally everyone at our house had no like zero dreams and they started having like multiple dreams a week and then we had like such uh upgrade and interpretation where before it would be so confusing and Mm -hmm. now it's like they'll tell us our dream and we'll be like oh yeah we know exactly what that means (laughs) yes for us actually i we wanted to tell you that you pray for one of her housemates and she didn't have dreams at all Mm -hmm. and she started having dreams after you pray for her i pray for her yes at the conference conference yes that's so fun i'm so glad you told me that she, and she had been like asking for dreams for months and like we'd pray for her but nothing and then after you prayed for her she was like oh my gosh I had a dream <laughs> oh my gosh that is so encouraging thank you so much for telling me that <laughs> and I, I love this because I haven't talked a lot about impartation yet on the podcast but it's so real that when God is really on this and and people who carry this gifting and this anointing are speaking about it you actually receive a measure of what they have already stewarded in their own life and something happens instantaneously. I mean, it's also just the work of the spirit. So you guys received an impartation that really catapulted you and turned things around. 
And then this girl ended up receiving the impartation when I prayed for her. And that's actually one of the reasons I felt led, one of the reasons to have a podcast is because whenever I talk about this, people start dreaming and people who didn't dream before and unlocking things. It's just something beautiful that God does through me. And so I love that you just brought that up. And on that note, because it felt like it happened kind of overnight for you guys, I'm wondering if this dream is actually speaking to that because this is an accelerated pregnancy, right? Like this is something that you didn't even know was seeded in you yet. Allie's saying to you, hey, you're going to give birth. And you're like, my stomach is flat. I (laughs) don't have a husband. I do not know what you're talking about. But then you immediately in your mind knew, okay, the father is Elisha, who we just recognized represents the spiritual champion who is totally the father, right? And also is an indicator of, I would say the nature of the baby, which is definitely a prophetic and the prophetic gift. And you've already been operating in this. I don't think this is like the first birth of that, but I'm wondering if it's in the facet of dreams and dream interpretation and even the language of interpretation. And because of Isaiah 55, 4, that was all about him raising up a prophet to be a ruler, right? To be a leader. But just how quickly you grew in interpretation reminds me of this pregnancy. I'm just like, wait, what? Oh, I'm pregnant. Oh, I'm giving birth. Oh, it happened <laughs> super fast. Um, a couple other things stood out in the dream to me. And I love, Martina, do you already have interpretation yeah. for pieces? Tell me, tell me what you guys have come up with already. Yeah, so I'm like thinking about the clothes in the bathroom uh-huh. that really stood out to me um uh-huh. and it's like how to step into this new pregnancy and this new season and upgrade um she has to like take off the old robes kind of like take off the old clothes and the old mindsets and belief yep. systems yeah um and it's like literally saying like that's garbage <laughs> like it falls into the toilet um and like then mish she even tries to get them back like oh no these are my clothes like I need to save them Mm -hmm. and then Elijah's like what are you doing like give me your clothes and he takes them and so in the context of like Mm -hmm. what we've been saying about Elijah being the father it makes sense for him to like be taking away those things and him saying like no like you your true clothes is that white gown Uh, and I feel like it's talking about well I'll I mean white usually means purity and you've had a few words about purity and what uh, and also like a couple a lot of dreams about white rooms Mm -hmm. like white and so I feel like it's also talking about the purity in your gift and in the way in which you Mm -hmm. operate in your prophetic gift your yeah like the purity in your heart um I I feel like that's kind of the symbolism Mm -hmm. of that like taking away your your old mindsets belief systems maybe mm-hmm. about yourself, about your identity, how you dress yes. yourself and yes. put on the new gown that's being given to you to be ready to give birth to this. Yes. I think yes. you nailed that. Great <laughs> job. Martina, you also mentioned something about uh, the Elisha mantle or something the other day. It's this thing about Elijah and Elisha and the mantle and how like Elisha has to pick up that mantle. Um, and so I feel like mm-hmm there is this connection between the story in the Bible um, and about Mish like picking up the mantle that Elijah is giving her in a sense like then kind of the like that prophetic gift kind of ended up dying because no one no one picked up the mantle after Elisha Mm. and so the importance of carrying that and like becoming kind of responsible Mm -hmm. to steward the gift and to keep building on it and so I felt like there was something there about Elijah giving her like a white gown (laughs) like a mantle like yeah I love it I love it I totally see that and I think that speaks to also so beautifully the Lord is birthing in and through you this calling and you're receiving this mantle from him but it looks like you right like he could have just given it to you He could have just given you a gift or given you a mantle, but instead you birthed it. So it looks like you and it looks like God and it looks like Elijah. So there's all of these pieces that are combined here, right? And so even to what you just said, Martina, of like how we need to honor and really protect 
and keep sacred these things that God gives to us and take seriously what he speaks to us and walk in the ways. But yeah. the fact that when you had this baby or when you had the vision of having the baby, your heart was so in love. You mentioned, what, why don't you tell us about that again? Like, what did that feel like? It literally felt like uh, first love that the moms talk about. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, I've never felt something like what I felt for this baby in the dream. And I woke up and I was telling Martina like, hey, I've never experienced this kind of love before. Because it's been like, it's mine. Like it's my baby. Like I, mm -hmm. I give birth to him. Uh -huh. So it's been like, it was like, you know, like just this first love. Mm. and that exactly that so beautifully said that that indescribable love and mm. desire to protect and desire to love and teach and train and how it how that baby belongs to you and you belong to that baby there's this that it's just a really holy thing it's yeah. a very personal and holy thing and I think that is exactly what you were just mentioning, Martina, of like us needing to really not let the mantles fall to the ground, but yeah. steward them and love them and nurture them and pour into it, into the gift, yeah. into what God has given us. And this is such a beautiful picture to me of how you feel about what God has given you and this tie that you have and how it is in your DNA to actually protect and nurture and love this. Yeah. This and, and this call. And, and it makes sense because it's like, by going to the conference, we were stewarding that in the sense that we were unsure about going, but but we were like, we know that God's calling us to this right now and that he's talking to us a lot about this. And so we'll just go in faith to steward the gift and honor what he's saying. And so it's it's like really timely that you had mm -hmm. this because it's like you are stewarding the baby, like the gift. Mm -hmm. Did you actually have the baby in the dream or you just had a vision of yourself? When I just you had did? the vision of myself. Uh -huh. And we can't really put the like typical nine month time frame on this because it doesn't always work that way in the spirit. Plus this was clearly an accelerated pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see, and I don't know if we'll know right now if that birth has happened or if it's on its way. I feel that no, yeah, no. I feel that the Lord's kind of like giving me a lot of pieces in different dreams about like, okay, there's something that's about to be birth. It's gonna be something with royalty, mm -hmm. like prophetic, and it's like a lot of pieces. But I don't feel that uh, it actually happened yet. It's like yeah. the ultrasounds. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, and one of the things that stuck out to me too was the eleven centimeters. You were like, oh, I'm a seven, 11 centimeters dilated. Mm -hmm. And I have experienced 11s to usually be a time of transition. 11 means transition. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it was even just speaking to what was happening at the conference. Like that was accelerating the time frame because of the impartation that you received in this pregnancy. And that was transitioning into kind of this final push. Mm -hmm. Wow. I actually... I've never heard about dilation and stuff like this. So I look in Google and I was like, okay, with how many centimeters do you give birth? Mm. And it's actually 10 centimeters. So <laughs> that, it was kind of like more prepared. Like more than enough. More than, it was more than enough. So mm. they were like, okay, you're actually about to give birth because mm. you have more centimeters than what you needed to give birth. What do you think about the the 11 being a transition number like that was a moment of transition what does that feel like to you yes it, it has a lot of sense because I feel that this last three weeks actually I've been feeling a lot of insecurities and questioning about like um even things that the Lord's been speaking to me so yes I feel that in moments of transition mm. of course there's a lot of questions mm. so I feel that because of the transition that I'm walking in right now there's a lot of questions that are coming mm -hmm. uh, so yeah it has a lot of sense and I would even I would even say during these moments where you're feeling this resistance or you're feeling this tension or the struggle of these insecurities and things coming up that all sounds like 
contractions. That all sounds like what you would go through in labor. And I would just say, yeah. push, <laughs> just, <laughs> push, just through. push. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just keep pushing through. Okay. I have to just ask one more thing because the floss, the, the shaving and the dental floss, even though both of those yes. seem like, what? I think they're significant. I think yes. I was speaking about something in this. I love that you knew that you were going to have to give birth and your immediate thought was, I need to shave my whole body. Which, <laughs> <laughs> it was just not what I would think about, but you knew I need a razor because I need to shave my whole body. And when you went to go get the razor, you found f- dental floss and you bought it for $6.84. Yes. Right. But then you also ended up getting a razor. So you were flossing and fully shaved. And that was a part of your preparation. (laughs) Did you you even use the? No, I put it in my pocket. I was like, I'm going to return this after that. Oh, the floss, the floss. Yeah. She was like, why did I get this? It's completely useless. Or is it? Is it? So here's what I think about dental floss. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this too. When we're talking about the teeth, Teeth often represent understanding or wisdom or discernment, right? Because our teeth are something that we chew with. Have you ever heard the phrase, I'm going to chew on that and think about it and process it. So it's how we chew our food and then we can actually swallow and digest it. So it's about wisdom, about understanding, about discernment. So if floss is something that you actually use to clean between the teeth, to keep the teeth healthy, I'm wondering if there's actually something God is speaking to about you, you, this being actually really helpful in this preparation and during this pregnancy to just really pay extra attention and detailed attention to what you already know, the wisdom he's already given you, the discernment and understanding of what's happening and what he's shown you and where you're going. What I, what I got initially about the floss and the razor um would be like it would speak to like after the birthing some kind Mm. of way Mm. um because when I thought of the floss I'm like like the floss and the racer are like details Mm. like you're getting like it's not brushing your teeth you're like flossing so it's like exactly more more specific Mm -hmm. and so I feel like maybe the Lord's giving you an upgrade even in your prophetic gift to like be more specific and detailed and like go mm-hmm. after the things. Um, and I also feel that what, what you were saying about the wisdom and like going into like even the things that he's given you before that you think that you've already understood fully. Maybe there's like an invitation to like go back to those places mm-hmm. and the things, the revelation that he's given you before. And like, because there's more there that you can get from mm-hmm. that and I feel like the result of that will be that you will have like squeaky clean teeth in a <laughs> sense. it actually makes a lot of sense because the Lord has been speaking to me about like going back to my dreams going back to my pro- mm-hmm. prophetic words and he's saying like there is more in there so I kind mm-hmm. of like think that the Lord's uh, um, inviting me to go back and to he's been saying like there's more gold so just mm. go and look for it. Yeah. So that it makes a lot of sense because it's been like, you know, like the teeth, if you brush your teeth, they're clean. But actually, when you use the dental floss, it, it you, you're like, oh, it has more, like more. It was like last week that the Lord started speaking about like, okay, just go back to this <laughs> prophetic word, to this dream and pay more attention. He's saying like, hey, you're paying attention, but I need you to focus more. Yeah, and it also goes back to what we were saying about like how he's focusing your gift where mm-hmm. it's not like general perfect. I mean, yeah, but even more so like royalty and identity mm-hmm. with your perfect gifting. Two things. I think it's twofold because in the dream she was having the floss and it was very, it was very um, obvious that it was in preparation, right? She was like, well, before I had give birth, I need a razor. And then when she went to go get the razor, she found the floss and thought, oh, I'll return it at the other side, but it was before you had the baby, right? So I think this could definitely apply to both where exactly what you're saying, Martina, where it's speaking to actually the accuracy and the details and the, the, even the nuance of specific prophetic words that Mish is carry is called to carry and is called to release. And 
right now, because you're still in this leading up to the birth time right now, he's actually calling as a part of the preparation to get to get into the detailed places with the wisdom he's already given you. The dreams, just like you're saying, and getting up in the hidden places where it feels like things could be hiding up in there, right? Like you're actually just cleaning it all out to make sure that it's pristine and in line and that you know exactly what he's speaking to you. And just, there's always, there's more, there's more to clean. The razor is very interesting. Tell me what you thought of the razor. Uh, For me, I mean, the whole moment, I felt that it was like, kind of like, okay, I can see it right now that I'm pregnant, but I'm going to prepare it. So it was kind of like an act of faith of being, Mm -hmm. okay, uh, I don't know if this is going to happen, but I believe what you're saying. Actually, I feel that uh, Ali represented like the Holy Spirit because she was always there like with me. So she, I was like, okay, I believe in what you're telling me, even if I can't see it right now. So I went and I kind of like prepared myself. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm going to trust in you and I'm going to go and follow what you're telling me. Because if you're saying it, it's because it is. So it was like me going and preparing. But there are many ways in which you can prepare for a pregnancy and shaving is not really yes. a Important. common one. At least. <laughs> Like if yeah, you prepare true. for for birth by shaving, great. But like, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's weird. Um, Remember, so, it's symbolism, though, guys. We're in dream world, right? Right. Yes. That's why it's like I totally feel like they're like it. Definitely shows how in the dream you trust Ali slash Holy Spirit with what they're saying. But it's like there's even more there mm-hmm. that we can like kind of dig yes. out. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking. I had this thought. I'm not really sure at all, um, but how, like, I was thinking about the razor, and it's, like, it can be used to, uh, like, shave, of course, but then it can also be used to harm, in a sense, and so it's, like, this thing of, like, double-edged sword, um, Mm. or, like, something that I got. (laughs) I think you're, I think you're onto something with the double-edged sword thing, Yeah, and you were already thinking in your mind you were going towards the word of God being a double-edged sword, sharp as a double-edged sword, right? And how it can cut through bone and marrow and it discerns the heart. Yes. (laughs) And so my very thought was, I mean, removing hair, just removing that cutting hair, removing hair, hair trims can represent different things in dreams. But one of the things it represents is actually like, um, like cutting away of the flesh and Mm -hmm. that actually speaking to like mindsets. And actually using a razor or something like you, if you're just equating it with the double-edged sword, which I think is, I'm resonating with that. Mm -hmm. It's you're using the word of God to actually continue to renew your mind in Mm -hmm. preparation and the word of God, renewing your mind and cutting away the mindsets of the flesh while fine tuning your understanding and discernment and getting to all the details of what God has spoken in your words. I mean, this sounds like the best kind of preparation before you're birthing Mm -hmm. a gift, a ministry, whatever this is going to look like, right? Mm -hmm. It actually makes a lot of sense because three days ago, I had a vision where the Lord was giving me a sword. (laughs) I was saying like, there's an upgrade that's coming uh, in wisdom of my word. So it it. makes a lot of sense because he was, yes, of the word. And he gave me this sword and I, I was like here and he was like, a putting a crown over me and saying like okay this is the car (laughs) yes so it makes a lot of sense I've never thought about like yes but it makes a lot of sense how they're all tied together yes wow 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 and so your whole outfit here your whole ensemble is this royal robe this crown of royalty but you have a sword that is meant to how did you say with with wisdom Oh, that there was more wisdom coming through mm-hmm. his word. Okay, boom. Wisdom through the word. T, yes. razor. T, yes. razor. <laughs> it makes a lo- yeah, it's, it's so funny because I've never thought about the dream like that. But the Lord, like three days ago, he's, he get the timing. He gave me this, <laughs> so it was like, I had this dream like a month ago, but it's like the perfect time to interpret it. 
And that always happens. It's so cool. <laughs> we can't even stop it. He is just absolutely leading us. That feels really like it leads to an application even for the dream. Cause we talk about needing an application. Sometimes our dreams will lead us to like, okay, now what do I do now? God, how do I partner with you over what you're saying? Sometimes it's, I'm just going to trust. I'm just going to believe I'm going to go make a phone call. I'm going to go do this thing. But this sounds like he's already showing you the application for this season in preparation for this pregnant or the birthing of this gift from him is exactly what he's already speaking to you about. That's the application for the season. Yes. yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Actually, when you were speaking about transitions, I kind of like remembered that when I was going upstairs with Elijah, I started having these questions about, about like, oh, my God, they want to steal my baby. Oh, right. It's being like insecurity. Insecurity is like transition, like going up. It's a transition. And it's being like, oh, actually, in this transition, all of these insecurities and, you know, like questions are coming. So it makes a lot of sense. And it's like, no, you can trust them. You can trust Ali. You can trust Holy Spirit. Like you're safe with them. Yes. And they were like, kind of like, a sh- champion championing, championing. yeah like push like you can do this and I couldn't believe it but they were believing in me oh it's really beautiful I love in the dream that you were like hey just check it in so how are we going in the process <laughs> you know you you didn't even know but they were like oh you're ready this is happening now oh you're at 11 centimeters which is more than prepared right So you don't even need to know because God knows when it's time and when you're ready and you can just keep checking in and he'll go, oh, yep, you're ready. It's time. Here we go. I feel the Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Just, just sit in that and just enjoy it. I mean, this is, this is the kindness of the father is he speaks about who we are. He speaks about our giftings. He speaks about the gifts he's given us, but he also speaks to our specific season and the things that are happening in our daily life and gives us strategies Mm -hmm. and places to focus as we are preparing for big things. He speaks through our dreams over the smallest details. And it's so easy at first glance, you know, we're like, oh, it's a pregnancy dream. Amazing. And so we knew the kind of overarching interpretation, but to go in through these details, it's like, he's given you a blueprint Mm -hmm. of what's happening and what to do and what your strategies are and who you are. It's just so beautiful. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that dream. Truly, that is no small thing. And I know Martina and I and listeners really value it. And I think you spoke to a lot of people today. I think other people were just getting insight and drawing closer to God. So thank you for being vulnerable and for bringing it. No, thank you for helping me with the interpretation. It actually... Oh my God, it means a lot. And I feel that there's like a lot of clarity in this season for me and mm. what the Lord is like kind of like inviting me to. Mm. So it's so beautiful to, you know, like just, oh my God, I love dreams because it's like a, you know, like the Lord speaks to you, but you don't understand. But when you bring other people in, yeah. it's like, it's really beautiful to see how community works with the dreams yes and the prophetic because it's like the Lord speaking through you guys so it's so beautiful to see how oh because I when I had the dream I felt like oh my god this is kind of like a cornerstone for me like a dream that's really significant but I couldn't find the meaning and I tried to interpret it and it was like I don't have any interpretation Mm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say real quick. It's just like the timing of the Lord and like he he's the giver of the interpretation, like the Holy Spirit is the revealer. Um, And so it's this thing of like, we tried to Ooh. interpret it. We actually went to two people who were going to interpret dreams and they they were like very vague and I couldn't get it. But today, having like had this vision three days ago and then like these couple of weeks where, where you were feeling this transition mm-hmm. and different things. It's like, the Lord is like, okay, now's the time. And now it's going to be clear. And that's actually not the first time it's happened to us. It's like, we'll have a dream. It will be so confusing. And then two weeks after we'll be like, how did we not see that? But it's, just <laughs> the, it's the one revealing. 
And so it's always perfect timing. So well said. He is always the revealer and it is perfect timing. And the community piece, it's just, it's the key that unlocks the the ones that are, we're not able to unlock. And I think he hides it and waits on purpose because Mm -hmm. he knows who, who will lend into that and who he wants to affect in the process. So yeah, I feel honored, so honored. You guys are yes. coming back. And next time Martine is bringing a dream and you can, <laughs> you still come to Mish and we're going to do a, a community interpretation session with hers. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. You guys um, just love you both. We love you. A we lot. love you, Margot. Mwah. Talk to you soon. And welcome back. Oh gosh. I loved that. I love the format of the communal interpretation. I'm sure that you did too. As you can see, there's just more facets and more layers and more perspective when there's more people interpreting. So I'm going to do more of this in the future. And in the name of communal interpretation, I have a challenge for you. I am posing a challenge for you dream interpreters out there. Even if you're just learning, there was a specific symbol in this dream just now that I wrote down that I had written down that we never got to and it was just kind of in the back of my mind and it feels definitely significant. At the point where she went and bought the floss, she had a very specific number. She bought that floss for $6.84. Now this is not an accident that this detail is in there. I know the fingerprint of God and this has got him all over it. So $6.84, $6.84. What does this number mean? What is God saying through this number? I want to pose the challenge that you go on the hunt for this. And when you feel like you have an interpretation just for fun, send me an email and let's start seeing what God is speaking and see what comes out of it. I have a hunch, I have an idea of a direction to go, but I'm not sure yet either, so I'm going to dig into this. But wouldn't it just be fun to get some communal interpretation on this dream? So please don't hesitate. My email is in the show notes. And as always, don't hesitate to tell me what you're learning and what you're gleaning from the podcast, asking questions, tell me your feedback. I'm so interested and I'm just so happy to journey with you. I'm going to sign off for today. And until next time... Happy dreaming.